Hello everybody, you are watching ADC English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today we are going to read the text of H. Bates, The Ox. You all know the ox renders unsentimental pities for those that suffer alone. Here we will try to sketch the character of Mrs. Tharlow, the protagonist of this story. In that perspective, also we will try to understand the story as a whole. So let's begin our discussion with H. E. Bates and his type of short stories. Bates is a writer of diverse talents and he excels at the short story. Bates admired Maupassant's realism and economy of storytelling. With the authors staying in the background, like Catherine Massfield, he also appreciated Chekhov's most sympathetic attitude towards the characters. Uh, another modern short story writer with whom H. E. Bates has much in common and whom he greatly admires is the American author uh, Ernest Hemingway. Like Hemingway, uh, he aims to present the bare basics of action and dialogue through natural colloquialism. One of H. E. Bates' great strengths are showing a manly and unsentimental compassion for those who suffer alone. Now, here is a, a list of his other short stories. You might uh, read a few of them or try a few of them. But uh, notably, all of the stories are not as good as the Ox and his list of the novels are also. So you should try other short stories to get a glimpse of his type of writing in other stories too. In Bates the Ox, we find Mrs. Tharlow was grounded by poverty and being overmerged in toiling life, was often troubled by the harsh remarks of her husband and sons. Her necessity and the constant drudgery are set out to try her for fatigued by the levers of the four squares. She stoop to bovine spirit. That's why the title comes The Ox. Describing her toils, the author indirectly deplores both her approach as well as the society's insipid outlook on that whole situation. But it does not curse poverty, but in a few lines drops the very pathetic scenario, the story of Mrs. Thalo. In dead silence, a kind of no word has been depicted to define the story. It's like that of an unsentimental pity depicted through words. Mrs. Thalo is a workwoman, tries her utmost to run the family. Our family consists of two kids, age 9 and 13. Her semi mad husband and she herself. The apples of Mrs. Thallo's eyes are her two sons. She works as hard as she can possibly do down the hill and home. So, and, 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 and throughout different villages, working only to save money for her son's future education. Her husband, Mr. Thallo, had a silver plate in his head and was injured in military action. Who is this Mr. Thallo? The husband of Mrs. Thallo is a, always a kind of oversized shirt, ill-tempered rage due to some head injury, a kind of drunkenness and often time quarreling with others if someone jokes about his silver plate. So he is himself a burden to the family. No work, only loitering. He steals ultimately the hard-earned money of Mrs. Thallo and had a 
fight with someone and murdered somebody in action. Uh, ultimately, she, he was prosecuted and hanged. Mrs. Thallo lost her husband and her money and son's civil letter loss. Not physically, but as well as bondages there. Mrs. Thallo's brother, in fact, was a rich man. And in the lives of poor people, poverty estranges children from parents and wives from husbands. After the trial and execution, the boys of Mrs. Thallo chose to stay with their uncle. The children got attracted by the rich living there. So after some time when Mrs. Thallo went there to take them back, they flatly refused to go back with her. They felt absolutely no love for her. This was the last unbearable shock for her. It was harder than the loss of money or the separation of her husband. She has already lost the money she accumulated. She has already lost her husband. Only with the purpose, with the goal of raising her children. But even the children are not willing to come back with her. So devastated Mrs. Thallo struggled up the hill to her home with a flat tire in her bicycle. Impression that she would never reach it. In absolute poverty, without proper food, decent clothing, and timely sleep, Mrs. Thallo continued to serve his master with diligence. She knows no comfort. The ox is a story of a bereaved mother and lonely suffering and the sufferer is the heroine Mrs. Thalo. Hers is the story pathetic, sentimental and earns the pity of reader for her relentless struggle. Let her family survive in the hostile situation of poverty. She has her children. So the Story of Mrs. Thallo is like that of a suffering. Suffering without showing any sentiment or any sort of feelings are exercised. It is like that of a animal kind of instinct with heavy heart. Someone is working, working and working only to make her family happy. Now going to the text, it all began with a perfect description of Mrs. Tharlow's home. The Tharlows lived on a small hill, as though it were not high enough. The house was raised up as on invisible stilts, with a wooden flight of steps to the front door, exposed and isolated. The house is raised by invisible stilts and has a wooden flight of steps to the front door. As the house is isolated and exposed in any position where it will strike at it from all quarters, in front of the house there are empty ploughed lands and has the color of the wet steel. The country outside has its wide horizons and beauty park excellence but all this means nothing to mrs thal she is circling in the sphere of her house hills empty barren front lands and the windy sex all these situations perfectly suit the psyche of mrs thal she is burdening with world, her gamut of thought, her linking and and all her liking and disliking so profusely and profoundly within the small circumference of living and sustenance of her family and her son that she is in real sense isolated, dejected, 
डेसिपिटेटेड रिजेक्टेड एंड फ्रस्ट्रेटेड इन साच ए कंडिशन हुई चीज लाइक दैट ऑफ एटॉप ऑफ हील आइसोलेशन इज एन ऑब्जेक्टिव को रिलेटेड मेंटल स्टेट द लोकेशन ऑफ मिसेस थालोस हाउस एंड द मूवमेंट ऑफ द सीजंस ऑल लाइक दैट ऑफ सिंबॉलिक इमेजेस ऑफ ह्यूमन कंडीशंस ऑफ गुम डिस्पेयर आइसोलेशन सफरिंग वेयर सामोन लाइक मिसेस थालो इज लाइक दैट ऑफ सिसिफास लाइक एग्जिस्ट एग्जिस्टेंशियलिस्ट फॉर्टिट्यूड एंड स्टोइकिज्म which makes her go on amid all the misery each and every time he goes at up but just before the reach of the top the burden is fallen and again she comes back again she takes it is like that of a cycle vicious cycle tired and tedy circle of struggling for existence Mrs Thallo is having a drunkard husband and to infants to grow up she is the sole earner at present to sustain a family of hearts she is meticulously anxious to raise her income so as to provide her particularly the two sons she she had a great dream for her songs a healthy fortune uh, she is always dreaming of her two sons that i have already told are aged 9 and 13 she likes to realize a kind of a refined ambitions regarding them making their ways as assistants in shop as clerks in offices and even as butlers with bovine spirits Thalo walks throughout the day. At half past seven in the morning, accompanied by her rusty cycle, Thalo begins her day. And six every evening, she returns with grey bundles of washing, oil cans, sacks, cabbages, bundles of old newspapers. These old newspapers and reading of them. Are the only solace or the only entertainment she had in her spare time, which she hardly has. And bounds of windblown wood and bags of food. So these are the regular scenarios that often we see of Mrs. Thal. Look at the description that it follows in the second paragraph. It goes. Uh, like at sub half past seven every morning, Mrs. Thallo pushed her great rusty bicycle down the hill. So it's the all description that I have already told you. Here, the last line of the second para that it reads, slopping along beside it, flat heavy feet pounding painfully along under mud stained skirts. Her face and body ugly with humpy angles of bone. She was like a beast of burden. So this is the first word that has been related to here, stating that she is having transformed or metamorphosed into a bovine spirit. Slowly and slowly, the poverty and drudgery, the all the hard works. all the toils has transformed her into a beastly attitude a bovine spirit in her all these hard works that she is toiling washing washing scrubbing and all such uh, works she has been doing for long 15 years and her earnings are kept in a brand bag hidden under a mattress in the back bedroom it is this money with which she wishes to actualize the dream regarding her son that is entertaining in her heart for a long period and with the impersonation of holding up she has lost her happiness 
the zeal and the vitality and has to be turned into a beast of burden. Now here I can also tell you one thing that the metamorphosis of Mrs. Thalo from a human to that of an ox is not physical. Partly physical because her hard work has transformed her physically. But from the spirit, from the heart, the poverty is such a hard line that it makes or breaks each and every possible ways of emotions. And that emotions transfixes someone into unhuman or dehumanized somebody. And that spirit is now is in the page and Mrs. Thalo is in the, that transformation. Now hard works all and all the time that hard works and unimaginative relentless hard work and the mechanical dradgery has pushed her human spirit away. In all these dragedy, her bicycle is the symbol of soul companionship. And Mrs. Thalo dreams about it and cannot walk without it. The bicycle is an object that externalizes the sway of emotion or the, or, or the emotional exaggeration or emotional swinging which might have been suppressed otherwise in Mrs. Thalo. So Mrs. Thalo is the chief character of this story and the title Ox obviously goes to her and her bicycle is the oxen cart or the cart for her. Now the story about this woman her ambition and her first set. Bates has done a competition. Mrs. Thalo and her bicycle is being a metaphor for that of the beast to a cut. Again, Mrs. Thalo has been described with her face and body as a beast of bird. The storyteller obviously Bates have some design. The design of stating the facts without being sentimental. Because it, because it strikes heavily on the readers. So here, Mrs. Thalo's bicycle serves as a symbol of constant drug carry. A sense of perpetual monotony from which she is never parted. But for Mrs. Thalo, the bicycle is a kind of a security for her because she feels always secured when her bicycle is okay. Now when we are talking about Mrs. Thalo, uh, her bovine loyalties and qualities are there. Physically, the hard work has transformed her to be bovine to be muscular one and her attitude of depositing money and doing the same appointed task without failing and uh, the thinking of that perspective that uh, and devoid of thinking anything else working working what makes Mrs. Thalo that she is a kind of sufferer a sufferer of poverty but at the same time she is having an illusion that money alone can make a man happy that uh, that money sometimes marks human relationship human happiness is a kind of a truth that uh, she never deny and and it is is, is altogether foreign to the nature of Mrs. Thalo because she has not the time to think about it. She is only thinking to deposit a kind of money that makes the eyes, the two sons future secure. She has been so much engrossed with this fact of money, money and money that when 
uh, she has seen that her husband has stolen the money somehow gambled somewhere and committed a kind of a murder and prosecuted or executed but she has no emotions on her husband she is uh, being interviewed by a policeman she is more concerned with her money than with her husband even in her inquiry about her husband in her brother's house she speaks more of her money than that of her husband so money 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 all the time mrs thallo is asking for but why money she is not thinking about the money to secure her own but to secure the future of their uh, sons the husband is semi mad he is he has no trust in her husband so who is to carry out this part see that's why she has become a kind of a mad so to search for and to get back that money not even thinking about husband so her dad gary made her or pulled her down to the spirit of inhuman it's an ox like attitude so bates story here an implicit analogy between mrs thallo and the ox we have discussed several times of this issue the title word hints at it the sentimental uh, projections of the character of the so called sentimental presentation of the character is not made here rather unsentimental words are being used only to strike the reality but what is important in this story that as the story you find that there is some development uh, the many of the little bit of symbolic references come in projection uh, and and mrs thallo's apparently thoughtlessness resignation and the silence and the selfless fortitude uh, simply these are the complex ways her character differs from that of an ox Mrs Thallo merely uses that instinctive and blank mind as a defense mechanism in situation of acute adversity where her husband is of no help and her children for whom she has done everything do not care for her so her silence tells many a thing than an ox voices can have its way Mrs Thallo does not express her least concern to know all the serious crime committed by her husband expresses Instead, her anxiety about the stolen money to the police officer but why so the reckoning horse winner by d h lorenz i must refer this particular novel or particular story by d h lorenz here like mrs tharlo mrs morel to deserts for money 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 for her, every time so her uncontrolled desire for money only to release her so called social stalls before hard neighbors without caring for the disturbed psychology of her children she is very often engaged in quarreling with her husband to earn more more and more but here mrs morel is a kind of psychotic a obsession of money is there but there is covetousness but in thallo's part there is no covetousness but there is a kind of necessity that's the difference between these two stories there is a valiant cause the cause for necessity relinquishing all the leisure she is doing the duty 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 only to making a miniature of human quality sinking sinking and further sinking and becoming an ox Truly, Mrs. Thallo is rather like an ox, patient, hardworking, determined, and completely lacking in imagination. She has just one idea: 
to save money for her two sons. Okay, there might be some noble cause for saving her money, but she is doing the same thing, saving the money. Like an ox, she plods away at her work and thinks of nothing else. Even murder seems unimportant in comparison. When the money is still no longer needed, she cannot grasp that the symbolic importance of the or the inner thought of the ox is quite immense. Though the story element, if we read the entire story, is rather thin. Now, it is the hard attempt of Mrs. Thalo for a happy, for a happy family. Because her husband is like that of a doing nothing. And the tragic realization that uh, what she has valued most, the future of children. When at the end of this story, we find that children are unwilling to return with Mrs. Thallo. That at that very situation, that is the ironic tense that what's for the money. So here it is told that you the mother have accumulated money or tried to accumulate money out of the compulsion of love but without showing it. So as you have not shown love, the children are living apart from you. Be another point that poverty might have the cause of this trouble. The entire family, the madness of her husband, the pains that or the darkery that with which Mrs. Thalo is going through, even the children who are settling down at their mama's home, is 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 all all but a kind of a, a reasonable a, a reasonable cause for that kind of this area of the family is the poverty. Now, the ox by beds is a tale of uncomplaining suffering of a woman. Mrs. Thallo who walks day and night in a mechanical responsive manner in order to give her two sons a secured future. Now here it is also a tale of her sad dreams when finally she lost all her money as well as love from her sons. Now the story is open-ended. It is us who have to make a conclusion with the typical reading and each and every time, each and every perspective of social panorama, we have to see what Mrs. Thalo is doing and why she, she is an ox or why she is not an ox. I have some questions for you which you should post in the comment section. The symbolic importance of the bicycle what the symbolic significance of Mrs. Thallo's cottage and why, what's the relationship between Mrs. Thallo's ox and with that a bicycle and the cart and what's the symbolic significance, if any, uh, of M M Mr. Thallo's silver plate and why um, Mr. Bates has uh, depicted the story in some um, straightforward wordling with with nothing sort of emotional uh, he 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 tells the story straightforward why so and how artistically it is embedded into the storyline how far the comparison between and the kind of poverty and affluence the family between mr uh, Mrs. Thallo and that of her brother in competition. What do you find in this story? And why the sons uh, left Mrs. Thallo or remain unwilling to return with her mother? Why? So what? what is your conception regarding this or what is your views regarding this? So try to make some possible answers of these questions or your comments there. If there is any question or further questions regarding this short story, you must ask me. I will try my best to give some possible answers. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.